all works at its highest levels. How badly has this been handled? And could it have been handled better? Oh, without a doubt. This is the (laughs) worst handling of a bad situation in the history of baseball. I mean, even Bud Selig with the uh, steroid era handled it better, and he wound up in the Hall of Fame. So Rob Manfred, who's an excellent labor lawyer, who we had to go up against in 94 during the strike, uh, he was the heir apparent to Bud. He, he failed miserably on this. And, and I'm going to tell you why. He went to the players and basically said, hey, listen, our investigation is going to be mainly what you tell us. So we're going to base how we do this whole investigation on whether or not you're truthful with us. Now, if you go to any criminal that's committed a crime and you ask them to rat themselves out, how truthful do you think they're going to be? So they gave some half-truths half to some of the things that the, the MLB already knew about through Mike Fires, but that was it. And even, even the commissioner yesterday himself said, well, yeah, there was some, some uh, contradictory testimony about the postseason and whether or not they cheated in 2017. And then a reporter did a, a nice uh, follow-up question and said, well, where was the misinformation? Well, that came from the players. Of course they're going to lie. They're not going to out themselves and out the World Series of 2017. So, you know, just like the Mitchell Report, really shoddy investigation, and you could say, well, they don't have subpoena power and stuff like that. We'll dig deeper because, you know, the fans of baseball are digging deeper on YouTube and finding all kinds of great information, including Chirinos is at bat during the postseason where something falls off of his shirt and he picks it up and it's caught on his thumb. And he picks it up, he can't get it off. It's And it looks like so good. something you would see inside a cell phone. So there's damning information if you really wanted to find it. MLB doesn't want to find it. They would have to rat out other teams. I can't wait to see what happens to the Red Sox because the Red Sox will be very telling because Alex Cora was, was knee-deep in this stuff with the Astros in 2017. You can follow the Twitter at Rob Dibble 49 points out in 94. The strike meant the World Series uh, didn't even happen. So not a big deal to vacate the 2017 series because there's no winner from 94. But Rob, as someone who was a uh, was way up the ranks in the Players Union, a lot of people say uh, there's nothing you can do. The union is way too strong to punish the players. They would have never allowed it unless you had some giant, expansive, as you just described, investigation that held all players accountable. Do you buy into that position as to it doesn't matter what Manfred would have tried to do, the players were never going to be held accountable? No, and that's not truthful. And Tony Clark, who I think should be removed himself, um, (laughs) you know, he basically said, listen, we never agreed to immunity or anything else because you never asked us. And they don't treat the players' union with any respect, and they never will. And, in fact, Rob Manfred right now is chuckling, hey, look at the ripple effect that we've sent through the union. They've been trying to break our union since the 80s. And ever since Marvin Miller was in power, uh, we've had really good labor lawyers, Mike Weiner, Don Fear, who's now the head of the NHL Players Association, and Tony Clark's the first guy that's not really a lawyer, and he shouldn't be in charge. And so him to come out and basically give you this weak uh, mumbo-jumbo about, you know, hey, you know, we, we've, you know, passed back and forth on what should happen in the future. The players should have been punished. If you have to file grievances or go to court about it, let that happen. Let, let it play out in the courts. But you don't protect the minority just like you did during the steroid era. That didn't work well for the union. This is not going to work well for the union. Now, Mike Trout has to come out. Aaron Judge has to come out. You've got Marcakis. You've got Justin Turner. You've got Bellinger. And they have to do the job of the union and have to do the job of the commissioner combined. And now you're putting it on the players to follow through with what? Throwing at the players to get some kind of punishment? That's bullcrap, too. The players shouldn't have been put in this position to begin with. The commissioner failed to do his job uphold the integrity of the game. That's why commissioners were brought in in 1919. Ooh. Those eight players got lifetime bans. 
You could have banned a couple of players and fought that out in the court system. Eight men out, five o'clock versus blue chips. Rob Dibble joining us right now on the <laughs> Petros and Money Show, one of the all-time great people. We love him. He's got a big show in Connecticut, and he's joining us right now in Los Angeles where he used to live for a long time and uh, talking baseball because it's important right now and more people are talking baseball than anybody normally would uh, this time of year. It's a it's a crossover media story. Uh, there is something to be said for that. But, but Rob, do the owners – I mean, they seem to like Jim Crane. He's not like a McCourt guy or a March shot. You know, he's not an outsider. So do the owners care – what anybody thinks? I mean, the, the commissioner is basically there to protect those guys, right? I mean, that's who the commissioner works for. Uh, do they do they care that the players are upset? Do they care about this outcry? Or are they just happy that people are talking baseball? Oh no! Every everybody, all the all the owners have stepped back and told their underlings, the Joe Maddens of the world, and some of the other managers like Aaron Boone, the, some of the mouthpieces for ownership. I mean, Hal Steinbrenner came out and said, "Hey, let's nothing to see here. Let's move on." Are you nuts? This is the biggest scandal in 100 years. So the, until you work it out for the punishment phase moving forward, and, and here's the biggest thing, guys, that MLB, they're the ones who brought the replay rooms right next to the dugout. They laid the foundation of this technology in the hands of these nerds that then brought it to the players that, hey, we have algorithms. We could figure this stuff out in real time. We could really help you get a, get a leg up on the competition. That's where the game got screwed over. The fans got screwed over. That's what I advocate now. How do the fans believe that these games are not fixed? They're not rigged. And that's Rob Manfred's job. You have to unrig these games. You have to take the technology out of baseball, get rid of replay, close those rooms during the game. I don't care how you do it. But I, I would be more worried about the fans than the owners right now. The owners, they're making $12 billion a year. They don't care. They're splitting it up 30 ways. So Jim Crane's the least of their worries. How, now, if this was the Yankees or the Red Sox, Dodgers, or Cubs, they'd be freaking out right now. But yeah. until it gets to that level, that's why you haven't heard the punishment or what happened with the Red Sox. I can't wait. Because the Red Sox, I think, are going to come out just as dirty as the Astros, that they were using these signals to signal from the base paths what pitches were coming, and I think that's the next shoe to drop, and that's going to be a huge bomb when that thing drops. So, Rob, you know, we've been we've been asking this now for a, a week and a half, maybe two weeks. Do you think the commissioner could retroactively go back and change his decision and vacate 2017 and make him give back the 500 grand and their World Series rings because everybody is still so pissed off and won't stop talking about it? Absolutely. Absolutely because you know, money what they've said is in their in their agreement I guess with him if more comes out that they cheated in 2018 and 2019 or lied to him in their testimony he can now punish them. So that's, that's why, go back and listen to the tape of Altuve. Altuve says the reason they didn't strip my, my uniform off was my wife didn't want me to be bare-chested out there. Then you've got Carlos Correa out there tattoo. going, well, it was a bad tattoo. Well, they've got two conflicting stories there. So then the reporters just, I think it was two days ago, said to Altuve, what would you think of Carlos Correa? He goes, hey, what a great teammate. Well, did you, you know, he says you never use the trash can method. Hey, I can't talk about that, man. I can only talk about team stuff and what a great teammate he is. So he avoids that question totally because if, if they lie to the commissioner or it comes out that there was more lying and cheating going on, they can be punished. So that, what, listen to what they say as opposed to what they really say. Because not only are they, they big cheaters, they're huge liars as well. Because Carlo, let, let's look at John Carlos Stanton. Why does he even get involved in this yesterday or today? Why would you even say, we know they were cheating in 2018, 2019? These players like John Carlos Stanton gain nothing from throwing these other players under the bus. But they're doing it because they know the Astros are lying and cheating and they're sick of it. Because it makes them all look bad. If, if it was the same with the Red Sox, too, and that's the other shoe to drop, are they going to vacate that one, too? I mean, is the Nationals going to be the only legit champion in the last three years? That If that has to happen, it has to happen. Can you guys believe it that I have to defend the Dodgers? And I'm a, I'm a <laughs> right, former right. Red player? Well, look at how it's I, changed. I gotta, look how it's changed the whole the, story of their offseason. I mean, no one's talking about how they got their ass kicked. 
I know, and they and they deserve they deserve their day in the sun, and they got ripped off by possibly the Red Sox and the Astros, and now I'm defending the Dan Dodgers. Isn't that a hoop? But Mookie Betts is sitting there in their camp. I mean, what? I know what's going to happen. Well, I mean, they're all sitting there ripping these guys. And what if it happens to where it's the Red Sox too? He's not the only one. David Price is there. So, and you've got you've got Red Sox now. You got uh, Brock Holt. The Brewers got screwed too. So that he's now a brewer. So what if it comes out? You know what? And that's what needs to happen so that we can all, as, as people that love the game, passionate about the game, can move forward. The fans, it's their game. Not the players, not the commissioner. It's about the fans. And the Dodger fans got screwed. I can't believe I said that, but the <laughs> Dodgers fans got screwed. Dibs, um, just in, in terms of the, the idea that we could see a reduction in performance. As someone who has played, played at a very high level, had to match up with the best hitters in all of baseball in order to win a World Series, do you think we'll see a dramatic drop-off like we did with home runs with steroids this season? Absolutely. Listen, John Carlos Stan said I would have hit 80 home runs if I knew what was happening. Let me explain spring training, guys. You go in there this week is when you're facing live hitting. They used to drag out these L screens, these protective screens, because you're telling your guys what's coming. And so when you tell, like, Eric Davis and Barry Larkin and Paul O'Neill, hey, guys, here's my 95-mile-an-hour fastball that I'm just going to, you know, try to locate it because I'm trying to get locked in for the season, and he rips it right back at your face, you want some protection. <laughs> so um, imagine in a real game where the guys on the Astros knew what was coming or the Red Sox knew what was coming. Jeez. There's a danger involved in that. And so, you know, that all of that stuff has to be worked out for the game to move forward. And you're going to see home runs go down, averages going to go down. Look at some of these young players that came up and they got involved in this whole thing. Uh, my, my biggest problem is, guys, overall, Altuve got an extension in March of 18 for $163 million. How much of his stats are fake? Bregman, $100 million Ouch. extension. How much of his statistics are fake? Verlander, $66 million extension. Mr. Big Mouth about juice baseballs. How much of his performance is based on knowing he's always going to have offense when he takes the mound? What a confidence builder that is. So unless they work that stuff out, to me, the game's not going to recover for a while. Well, I, I'll be – I mean, look, I'm pleading ignorance here, Dibs. I had never seen that Chirinos video. That is insane. That is freaking badass. Yep. Well, it just goes to show they, they've opened it up to the armchair. 2019 arm, World Series. Armchair detectives right. everywhere are going to look. Thank God for that, guys. That's I, I want to say thank Dumbledore. you to the fans Dumbledore. that are doing the digging. I'm, I want to thank them because they're watching hours and hours and hours of YouTube video to dig this stuff up because the commissioner's office didn't want to do it. So, Isn't that a shame? So, Rob, uh, does baseball continue to try to keep a lid on it? You know these rich dudes are, are pretty detached. Absolutely. Or, or why, do you think Joe, why do you think Joe Madden came out? Artie Moreno, and I know him. I love him. But he probably said to Joe Madden, Joe, get out there and say, stop this nonsense. And Hal Steinbrenner went out there and said that. And other owners are out there going, hey, it's time to move on. We need to talk about spring. Nobody wants to talk about spring training. They're taking batting practice. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about the exhibition games. But this is something that is is at the heart of the integrity of the game. And and I even had one guy call my show and go, hey, but they were trying to win. And, and in 1919, well, they threw the World Series. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. They The game was rigged. The fans need to know that the game is not rigged, that it's it's mano y mano. It's, it's Rob Dibble versus Jose Canseco, and he could be on steroids and Dibble's not, and the good guys went out. And that's what we did 30 years ago. Yeah. Nasty will, boys. Will it ever stop? Yo, I don't know. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> what's what's Rob Dibble going to do tonight? He's going to go hang out with Charlton and Randy Myers and throw a bunch of 100-mile-an-hour rocks at each other just to get out the fury. Uh, God bless no. you, Rob. <laughs> we love you, man. And at Rob Dibble 49 there's great stuff there. And the players aren't letting uh, this go. Guys. They are not letting this thing go. And, it's been and, and I hope to God they don't. They're yeah. the only ones keeping this going, and they, they deserve to, to go out there and give their opinions. Well, we'll talk about it further as the show continues. Great interview. Always great when we catch up with Rob Dibble. We'll be right back with Sweet James Bergener talking about justice. What if you lost your ass betting on the Dodgers in 2017? Ooh. Shh. You might get in a car. Stop by the Bun Boy. 
Look at the rubble that used to be the Bun Boy. Admire alien the world's jerky. largest thermometer, tallest. Go get some teriyaki jerk and alien jerky. A falafel and uh, the bad Greek. Oh, indeed. <laughs> Sweet change coming up next.